to Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. Old Man Metal's Musings is a proud part of the Rat Style Review Network. And now, without further ado... Hey, this is Old Man Metal. Hope everyone's doing well, and welcome to the ninth episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. And today we're going to catch up a bit, because it's been a minute, and then we're going to take a look at the state of beer in COVID times by digging through my latest beer haul. And then we'll take a look at my first two attempts at pan and zoom animation, and that's going to be in the form of a pair of music video clips that I did for what this episode was originally intended to be. Before that, we'll check out our show beer, which is from Wilmington Brewing Company this time. So thanks for joining me today, and thanks to everyone who watched the last episode. We checked out the 2019 release of Barrel Age 1050, and we took a good look at Imperial Stouts and Barrel Aging. And then we looked at a new hot sauce of the month, and that was Advanced Tactical Weaponized Starfruit Death Star OG from Spicy Ninja. And between drinking a 12.5% stout in 20 minutes and ingesting a teaspoonful of Level 9 hot sauce, I was feeling absolutely no pain by the end of that episode, so check it out if you haven't seen it. As always, I want to say thanks to AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That's a song of his called Through the Electric Mist. And I want to also thank Rat Sal Review Network for their support. We'll take a quick look at some of the other podcasts on the network at the end of the episode. Mm. Talking is thirsty work already. So now we're going to take a quick look at today's show beer, and that's Blair's Breakfast Stout from Wilmington Brewing Company. That's a good look at her right there. And that's the beer. Get that where you can get a good look at it. Get that coffee out of the way. Wilmington Brewing Company is one of the must-visit breweries in Wilmington, North Carolina, and there are a few of them. It's a great town for beer. WBC is a family-owned brewery that grew out of a homebrew supply shop that opened in 2012 on Carr Avenue, and it was opened by Wilmington natives John and Michelle Savard. Uh, In 2014, they moved down the road to their current location, still on Carr Avenue, and last October they got city approval for a 5,000 square foot expansion, so they're not done growing yet. Wilmington was recently rated the 14th best city in the U.S. for beer drinkers by Smart Asset, and Wilmington Brewing Company is an excellent example of why Wilmington got that designation. They brew consistently great beers. They're best known for their IPAs, especially for a West Coast-style IPA called Tropical Lightning, which was my show beer for Episode 5, and also for a deceptively drinkable 6-hop 9.4% double IPA called Sneaky Goose and it drinks like about a seven and a half percenter, which is why they call it Sneaky Goose. As well known as they are for their IPAs, one of Wilmington Brewing Company's most popular beers is Blair's Breakfast Stout. Um, It's an excellent 7% breakfast stout. It's brewed with cold brewed coffee, lactose, oatmeal, and cacao nibs. This is one of their year-round beers. Um, They only started canning it about a year ago. Before that, um, for a long time, if you wanted it, you had to go get it from the tap room. And, of course, they had crowlers, um, so you could get it to go, but they didn't can it, like I said, until starting about a year ago. And I was fortunate enough, right after they canned it, to run into John at Hay Beer, and I was able to thank him personally for finally putting this beer in a can. Um, It's always cool when you get to say thank you to a brewer for brewing a beer that you love and doing something wonderful like putting it in a can where you can buy it and take it home with you. So, Oh, God, that's so good. So beers like this are called breakfast stouts because they're brewed with coffee, lactose, and oats. Um, They brew with coffee for the flavor, lactose to have some non-fermentable sugars that stick around, so there's a little residual sweetness and oats are generally used for mouthfeel. And they're typically seven or eight percent, so it makes for a hell of a breakfast, or in this case, a hell of a show beer. So cheers to the folks at Wilmington Brewing Company for making this great beer. Cheers to the folks at Hay Beer for stocking it so I could pick it up last time I was in town and enjoy it. And cheers to you for enjoying it with me. Mm. 
And I hope you're drinking a good beer right now. And by good beer, I mean a beer that you enjoy. So it's been about three months since the last episode of Old Man Metal's Musings and about two months since the last video I put out. And the last video I put out was the second one of a two video Q&A series I did in live chat on Dream and Demon. Those two videos were a lot of fun to do. I haven't honestly done any live work since the last episode, rather, of Pulpit of Doom. And I couldn't even tell you the last time I did a Q&A, so it was sort of something that popped up that I took advantage of to do. And it was really good time, and I'm glad I did the videos, but they were a bitch of a grind in terms of editing. I literally cut two hours of video down to two 30-minute segments. It was hundreds of cuts. It was just brutal. It took forever to do. At least it felt like it did. So I had this episode of the podcast planned for after the, um, after the two-part Q&A. And unfortunately, um, for everyone in the entire planet, COVID has complicated things, and that includes myself. I'm not going to get into my personal life, but there was time that was going towards the podcast and everything that goes into it, which is a lot of work. And that time had to be spent on other things for a few months. Um, but now we're to the point where it looks like a lot of the issues that we're having have stabilized a bit. We've reached a bit of an equilibrium that we call the new normal. And my time resources correspondingly have been freed back up a bit. So I'm circling back around to do a bit of catch up. Today we're going to start with beer. And then we'll circle back through metal and a few other things that we like to talk about over the next few episodes. So... We'll jump into the beer. So, maintaining a steady flow of great beer has been a priority for me during COVID, just like it always is, and I've had to do it while away from Wilmington. Greensboro is not exactly a beer mecca like Wilmington or Asheville. Um, there are certainly some solid breweries in Greensboro, but there's no new Anthem or Wilmington Brewing Company or Heist knocking the IPAs out of the park one after another. Since the COVID lockdown started, I've made a few Wilmington runs. I was down there a few weekends ago to go see to the house right before the sheetrock went up. And every time I'm down there, I stop by Hay Beer and pick up a fresh mixed case of the hoppy stuff. But other than that, I've had to rely on what I can get in Greensboro. And that's actually been pretty good. It seems like the Wilmington beer followed me up here. Since I've been in Greensboro, New Anthem, Wilmington Brewing Company, and Edward Teach have all started pushing beer up here. And I saw some flying machine in a Lowe's Foods the other day, so I know they're making it up here now, too. Heist has always come up here from Charlotte, resident culture. Now we're getting Wooden Robot as well. Burials everywhere, of course. Uh, so there's great IPAs here, great beer here. The question is finding them and finding them fresh. The answer to that question is Best Way, which is the longest continuously operated grocery store in Greensboro. It opened in 1948 as an A&P in the Lindley Park neighborhood, and it became a buy right in 1958 when that co-op was formed. And finally, it became a Best Way in 1972. Since 2008, the current owners have turned it into one of the places to go for good beer in the Piedmont Triad, and with good reason. I don't know how good of a grocery store it is. I've never paid any attention to the groceries. I never go anywhere but the wall of beer, but they have got the beer down pat. They have amazing coverage on North Carolina beer. If it's worth a damn and it gets distro, they've got it. They've also got a good amount of North Carolina beer that doesn't even get distribution. Plus, they've got the usual regional and national craft suspects. And they've also got an amazing selection of British beer. They've got other imports too, but their British selection is particularly impressive. Um, I can't think of anywhere I've been in that had that much British beer recently. Um, on top of their great selection, their prices are quite reasonable, and they do enough volume that their dates are usually good too, which is really important for the hoppy stuff. The other stuff, not so much, but for the hoppy stuff, it's got to be fresh. So I've been making a run to Best Way every other week and stocking up and filling in as needed with runs to the closest Lowe's Foods. And as far as a chain goes, Lowe's Foods really does a good job with the beer too. That's something that they've really gotten into. Most of them have taps. Um, they have a really good beer selection too, but you got to watch the dates there. You've got to pay really good attention to the dates. So I made that Best Way beer run today, and I figured we'd take a look at what I got and see what kind of wonderful stuff is running around North Carolina right now. First off, we've got Long Needle from New Anthem. And Long Needle is an IPA. It's hopped with Strata, Comet, and Simcoe hops. It's double dry hopped with Simcoe. Uh, it's built on pale malt and oats. It's a 7.5% IPA, and the flavor is described by New Anthem as fruit strip gum berry and a touch of weediness. 
Um, this is a new drop. I've never had this beer before. I don't know if this is the first time that they've made it or not, um, but I'm sure it's going to be good because it's from New Anthem. Um, one of the things about New Anthem that makes them a little bit different from other breweries is they don't really have core beers that are always available. They do runs of beers, they do drops, so there's not like any one beer that you can always get from them. And the good thing about that is if you know their drop schedule, when stuff is dropped, then you know how long the beer's been around and you know what beer is fresh. Um, they don't date their beers, which normally I take issue with, but the fact of the matter is the way they operate, um, just doing drops. Uh, if you keep up with them, you know what's fresh and what's not. So, um, looking forward to trying this one. Like I said, I know it's going to be good, and because um, it's New Anthem. Next up is another New Anthem beer, and that one is called On Cassette, and it is a double IPA. It's 8.1 percent. It's hopped with uh, Citra Amarillo Mosaic and El Dorado, and it's triple dry hopped with Citra built on pale malt, oats, and wheat. Um, none of that's unusual. And um, just the fact that it's uh, got citra and mosaic, that's just a classic combination. El Dorado seems to go really well with those. I've had a few beers that were triple hopped with those two in El Dorado. El Dorado, to me, people describe it different ways. It's really a berry-like thing to me. You get a little bit of spice and, and, and like a berry flavor is what I get from El Dorado mostly. So this is another one that I haven't had from them. Again, I don't know if this is the first time that they've made it or not. It's not one that I'm remembering the name of. So. Um, that's another one that's going to be a surprise, and those last two, I got two of each of those just to try them. Um, the third IPA that I picked up from New Anthem is called Don't Call Me Baby, and this one I've actually had. I've had this drop. Um, I don't know if this drop was the first time that they brewed it or not. Again, I don't remember having had it before now, but I have had it. It was absolutely fantastic, and I said to myself, if they've still got it when I go back, I'm going to get more. And it's another... New Anthem is known for the hazy New England-style IPAs. They're not always completely New England-style because a lot of times they'll have some degree of perceived bitterness left to them, um, but they are at least hazy hot bombs. And uh, this one is no exception. It's hopped with Amarillo, Centennial, and Simcoe, and it's double dry hopped with the Simcoe. And the Simcoe is really what I picked up uh, when I had this more than anything else. Uh, the best description I've ever heard of Simcoe, uh, the flavor notes for Simcoe is, uh, the cat ate my bag of weed and pissed in the Christmas tree. It's got some, uh, it's got a lot of really weedy cannabis notes, uh, a lot of really strong pine and resiny notes, and a little bit of cat piss, which sounds weird, but if you um, drink beer made with Simcoe, you know what I'm talking about, and it's not a lot of cat piss otherwise, or it wouldn't be good. So this is a really fantastic one, and, and largely, like I said, I get Simcoe off of this one, so. And this one's brewed with uh, pale malt and carapils, and carapils is not something that they typically seem to use. It doesn't seem like it's a dextrine malt that the brewers use in small amounts to build body, mouthfeel, head retention. Um, and this one did have a really nice mouthfeel to it, so I guess it did what was intended. So, number four, we're going to change breweries. And this is a beer called Fiddler's Dream, and it is from Newgrass Brewing Company in Shelby, North Carolina. And this is one that, uh, it's been around for a while. I've had it a, a number of times over, well, not a number of times, but I've had it probably three or four different batches over the years. Um, the first time I had it, it was absolutely fantastic. And this has been a few years ago, and it just blew my mind how good it was. And then the next time I had it, it was really, really ho-hum. Um, sometimes it's tough for brewers to get a recipe dialed in, especially early on. Uh, it seemed to me that they had some consistency problems with this beer, and I've heard other people say that too. I actually got to the point where I would ask someone if they find out if someone had had it before I spent the money picking it up. So we're going to see how this one is. Uh, it could be good. It could be bad. I've had it where it's absolutely fantastic. Hopefully they've got things straightened out. Uh, it's hopped with Azaka Centennial Palisade and then double dry hopped with Amarillo Centennial Citra and Mosaic. So it is a complex beer. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, honestly, when I had it before, I don't know if they've changed the, the, the hop profile on it or not. I don't know that I would have put it on having that many hops in it. But like I said, I have had it when it was an absolutely fantastic beer, so we'll see. The canning date's 6-17, so it's two and a half weeks old. So it's, it should be in its prime. If it's, uh, if it's not good, it's not uh, because it's too old. That's a fact. So we're going to try on that. And I picked up one of those to try. I didn't make an investment on that. 
Um, and to back that up, I've got another one of their beers, and that's Fiddler's Nightmare. And so Fiddler's Dream is a 6.7% IPA. That's the one that we just looked at. This Fiddler's Nightmare is a 9.5% triple IPA. 9.5% is huge for an IPA. 9% is huge for an IPA. 9.5% is really big. Um, I've had the Fiddler's Nightmare too, and it, I've had it back to back with the Fiddler's Dream, where the Fiddler's Dream was really good. The Fiddler's Nightmare, I didn't think was as good, but when it was good, it was still a really good beer. I don't remember it drinking like a 9.5%, so I don't know if that's changed or not, or if the alcohol is just really well hidden, but we're going to find out on this one too. Again, I picked up a single on this one just because I've had issues with consistency from this brewery in the past, and uh, I'm not buying a four-pack of beer unless I know it's good, because this shit's expensive. Um, so this is hopped with Citra and El Dorado and Mosaic, and double dry hopped with Citra and Mosaic, so it's not nearly as complex as the Fiddler's Dream. And um, Citra Mosaic, that's a fairly standard hop combination for this type of uh, hazy New England style IPA. The El Dorado is sort of just a bonus there. And uh, I like I, I like El Dorado mixed with those two. So this should be a good beer. Um, like I said, we'll find out. And so I took a gamble on the last two. This one I'm not taking a gamble on at all. And this is another hazy New England style IPA uh, called bound by time and that's from a brewery called Edmonds Oast and they are down in Charleston, South Carolina and this is the only South Carolina beer that I've got in the mix. Um, I've only had two or three beers from these guys. I think they've got another IPA called N Breath of Nebula I think. I've had that from them too. Both absolutely fantastic and I've had multiple batches of this uh, this bound by time and it's been really solid and consistent every time so when I saw this in there looked at the date and the date was 623 so that's like less than a week old less than two weeks old it's about a week and a half old at this point I went ahead and picked up a four pack of that this is a solid beer I know I can trust this one and um, so it's hopped with uh, Centennial Citra and Amarillo uh, so big citrus, big florals. Uh, like I said, it's a really good beer. Again, New England style, hazy. It's got some residual bitterness, so it's not a true New England style, but, you know, it's a continuum. You know what I'm saying? So changing gears after all these big IPAs, we've got what is my session IPA of choice right now. And that is, they got a little big 12 ounce can, isn't that cute little 12 ounce can, Festival Express. And Festival Express is from Foothills in Winston-Salem. And this beer hasn't been around terribly long. I think it, it came out about six months ago, and they did a bunch of PR behind it and made a big deal out of it. And it actually turned out to absolutely be worth the big deal. It's a very good session. It's 5.7%, so it's on the high end for a session. Um, but it doesn't suffer from the thinness and the wateriness that some sessions have. Um, it is really complexly hopped for a session. It's got Azaka, Citra, Mosaic, Galaxy, and Idaho 7. So you've got some of everything in it. You've got the tropical fruit, the citrus fruit, a bunch of grassiness, which I personally love, berry notes, um, pine, some of everything in here. And um, this one is uh, the canning date on this. I don't have it in my notes, but it was it was like 625 or 626. I mean, this has got this has got like maybe a little bit over a week on it right now. So very fresh and fresh is really important with sessions. Rule of thumb is for an IPA, the higher the ABV, the less sensitive the hops are going to be to degradation over time. So when you start getting down into session territory, you've really got to pay attention to how old it is. And if you luck up and get something that's less than two weeks old like this, you need to put it in the fridge and keep it fresh. So that's something that it comes in uh, six packs and 15 packs. I always pick up a 15 pack of it. It's a great session. That's my uh, uh, breakfast beer that I have at five o'clock. So it's not breakfast. It's still a fast breaking beer. It's the first beer that I have at the end of the workday. Um, so definitely picked up some more of this, found a good date on it. Um, very good beer. Definitely recommend it. And so looking at all those IPAs, we're going to move over to the dark side now. And I picked up a four pack of Milky Way from Trophy and Raleigh. Trophy is one of the one of the more well-known breweries in Raleigh and, and to my thinking, one of one of the better breweries in Raleigh. I'm not going to call them out as the best, but they make really, really good beer. 
Um, so Milky Way is a 5.3% milk stout, and it's brewed with caramel malt and a bit of sea salt, and that's sort of why it gets the name Milky Way, because it sort of tastes like a candy bar with all the caramel malt and the little bit of sea salt to bounce against it. And the sea salt in beer sounds gross, but it's like not even enough that it tastes salty. It's just enough that if you, if it, it, it takes the edge off the sweetness just a little bit, but it definitely doesn't taste salty or anything like that. Uh, Milky Way is one I've had plenty of times. This is a solid beer. Uh, you don't have to worry about the dates on it as much because it's uh, not one of the hoppy beers that we have to worry about hop fade on. So Milky Way is a solid one. It's a really good, it's a really good milk stout. Um, if you see it, you should definitely pick it up and try it if you like that kind of thing. And um, so picked up the small stout, balanced that out, had to get something a little bit bigger, and we went back to New Anthem again, and this is a beer called Cinders and Rain. Try to get that where you can see it a little bit better. So, New Anthem is known for their IPAs, particularly they are known for their New England hazy hot bomb IPAs, uh, but they also, when they've a mind, make a really fantastic stout. Cinders and Rain, it's an imperial stout, it's a traditional stout. I don't know if you would consider it American or Russian. Imperial, but it's a, it's a non-adjunct stout. It's not a pastry stout or anything that has adjuncts, chocolate, or any of the stuff that you might put in stouts to make them good. Um, it's 12%. It's uh, just pale malt oats and a blend of American and English dark malts plus nugget hops. New Anthem says it's complex and rich, chocolate and roasted marshmallow, and slightly scorched brown sugar with caramel tones for days. Um, this is one that I've had a few times in the past. I had it the first time I had it, I think, was last Christmas, after, not Eve, but afternoon, the afternoon of Christmas Eve, right before they closed, I was in there and had some of this on tap. If it's the same beer I'm remembering, and I'm pretty sure it is, absolutely fantastic. I think their flavor description is pretty good. Definitely the definitely uh, scorched marshmallows um, and the, the, the brown sugar. They say scorched brown sugar. I really get the, the, the scorched marshmallows is why I get a little bit of brown sugar, lots of caramel. Um, the thing with stouts is always where does it land on the scale? You know, you've got some stouts that end up really dry, bitter. You've got some stouts that end up really sweet. So that's one of the things for me is where does it land? And Cinders and Rain definitely lands on the bitter end of the scale. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of, uh, it actually reminds me a lot of uh, Old Rasputin. If you've had that, that is a, it's a, a really good imperial stout that also lands definitely on the bitter side of things. And this reminds me a good bit of it. So um, big, awesome, bad stout from New Anthem. And I picked up uh, four of those because you got to have four 12% stouts, right? And if a 12% stout's not big enough, and this is something I lucked up on. And I had just been talking to someone like less than a week ago talking about this beer and saying how much I love this beer and how much I'd love to run across some of it. I hadn't seen it in a while. And sure as shit, I go in the store and they had it in little bitty 12 ounce cans, but that's okay with this one. So this is an Imperial Stout called On Fleek and it is huge. It is 13%. It is a big ass Imperial Stout. In fact, it's so big that a lot of times when I buy it, I'll buy four of them and I'll have the first one and I'll say, that's really, really kind of hot. Put the other ones back and let them age a little bit, let them mellow out a little bit. Um, I don't know when this one was canned, so I'm going to try one. I picked up four of them and uh, we'll see if they need to sit a little bit. On, and Odd Fleek is an oddball because it's sort of a North Carolina beer, but it's sort of not a North Carolina beer. Um, it's an occasional collaboration between two different gypsy brewers, uh, Stillwater Artisanal Ales out of Maryland and Casita Cerveceria out of North Carolina. And uh, so gypsy brewers are brewers that go around and brew places that have excess capacity. They don't have their own breweries. They it's not contract brewing where they come in and brew for you. It's sort of reverse contract brewing where they pay you to let you come in and brew on their equipment. Um, these guys are so badass, they don't have to have a brewery. They can just pop in anywhere and make fantastic beer. So you don't see on fleek all the time um, just because it is, uh, it's an occasional thing. But whenever you see it, it's absolutely worth picking up. If you ever see it, buy it. Don't even, don't even hesitate. Don't even think twice about it. Pick it up. And I got a really good deal on this stuff, too, actually. I'm really pleased with the price that I paid for it. So 
That uh, is the end of the stouts. Um, had the uh, Milky Way, the 5.7% Cinders and Rain, a big 12% Imperial Stout, um, and then the 13% on Fleek. And this is this is also a, a more traditional stout. It's not an adjunct stout. There's not any adjuncts in it. I don't think. Pretty sure there's not. Now watch there be. So. The last four beers I got are singles, and they're all crapshoots. And the reason they're crapshoots is because they're from Heist. And Heist is an absolutely fantastic brewery. I'm not saying that the quality of their beer is a crapshoot. What's a crapshoot is they don't fucking date their beer. They do not put dates on their beer, which means when you buy it, you have absolutely no idea how old it is. Because of that, I do not buy Heist beer on spec. Normally when I pick up Heist beer, it's because I'm in Hay Beer down in Wilmington and Mike or Charles says, hey, we just got this, it's a fresh drop. And I know if it's a fresh drop, it's gonna be a fantastic beer. Buying beer from somewhere where I don't know the folks who buy the beer, I don't even necessarily, well, I'm not gonna say that, but I don't know them. Um, not knowing when this beer dropped, uh, Citraquential or any of their other beers that they make on a regular, it's, it's just a crapshoot. So. I picked up four of their beers, um, all of them to see if they're fresh beers. If they are fresh beers, I'll go back and get more. But I'm just, I'm not buying more than one of your beers if you don't put dates on your beer. That's just the way it is. And I go back to what I said about New Anthem. New Anthem, they, I cut them slack because I know when their drops are. And I know this beer, they're not making it continuously. So if it's out there, it was made for the last drop. So I don't knock them for it, but with Heist, it's always a gamble for me. I hate to say that. They're a great brewery. Their beer is great. But if you don't know how fucking old it is with the hoppy stuff, you know, you get something that's citra hopped. It's a month and a half out. It's fucking garbage compared to what it was when it was brewed fresh. And that's not me being, that's not be, me being an elitist. Citra comes off. If you get a month and a half old beer that's dependent on citra or is just a citra single hop, you get a month and a half down the road, that citra is gone. It's 75% gone, and all you've got is traces of citra and the malt base, and it's just garbage. I'm not paying what this beer costs to drink garbage. So, the last four crap shoots, they all have the potential to be great beers. The first one, if you know anything about North Carolina beer, you've probably heard of this one, Citra Quenchel. Again, like I said, from Heist. Citra Quenchel is a 7.1% IPA, and I just looked. It's currently ranked number 199 on Beer Advocate out of all the beers on the fucking planet. It's a top 200 beer out of all the beers that have been reviewed on that website that have ever been made on this planet that have been reviewed on that website. Did I put enough disclaimers in there? Absolutely fantastic beer. Fresh Citra Quenchel, I would stack up against anyone's New England Citra Hop Bomb. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely that good. And it is a Citra Single Hop. Um, if I knew it was fresh, if I knew this was two or three weeks old, I'd have picked up a four-pack, maybe even two four-packs. Just absolutely fantastic when it's fresh. But gets to where it's not fresh anymore, anything Single Hop Citra, it's fucking garbage. The next one I picked up to try is a little beer called 2020 Vision. And again, from Heist. And this is another beer of theirs that I know. I'm quite familiar with this beer. It's a very good beer, 6.7%. Um, it's hopped with El Dorado, Simcoe, Chinook, and Cascade. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic tasting beer. The El Dorado and the Simcoe take it in really different directions. The El Dorado, like I said before, I get mostly berry, a little bit of candy like that, or a little bit of candy with that. Um, Simcoe, like I said, weed, a little bit of cat piss, a bunch of pine, some really, some really funky herbals. It, Simcoe's just a funky hop. Um, Cascade, that's a little bit more in the ballpark of what you would normally see in this type of beer. But put them all together, this is a fantastic beer if it's fresh. So pick this one up. I'm hoping I try it and it's really fresh and I can go back and pick up three or four more of them. Now this one is one I've never had from them before, and it's called Two is Enough. But Heist is always a good gamble in terms of the beer itself. It's just the date. So if they make an IPA, it's going to be a good IPA. I've never had a bad IPA from them if it was fresh. Um, two is Enough is an 8%, so it's an Imperial IPA, which I guess is why it's called Two is Enough. It's brewed and double dry hopped with Citra Lemon Drop and El Dorado. So and again, it's another uh, Citra based beer, which they're very big on. And that's probably the most popular hop in IPAs anyhow right now. 
um, at least consistently. It's, it's been a big popular hop for a while because it's really freaking awesome. Um, so this is another one. I haven't tried it. It's got lemon drop in it. Um, I don't know a whole lot about lemon drop. That's not a hop that I've had a whole lot of. Um, so be interested to try that. Hopefully it's good and fresh because I don't know because they don't put dates on it. I'm going to keep saying that. And the last one is another one that I've never had from our friends at Heist. And that is called Mental Reflection. And Mental Reflection is a 7.2%. It's Citra, Mosaic, and El Dorado. I said uh, Citra and Mosaic. That's a very popular combination for this type of IPA. Um, El Dorado, I've had that combination of hops before, and it works really well. Um, we're going to see how this one does. 7.2%, so it's a, a normal grade IPA. Um, again, if it's fresh, it's going to be fantastic. Heist is good. Put, putting, start putting dates on your cans, dudes, and I will buy the hell out of your beer and not even think twice about it if I know it's fresh. But otherwise, you could have had, you could have had a half, my, half of what I spent on beer could have been heist, and as it is, I picked up onesie twosies because I don't know if it's fresh or not. You know, it sounds like I'm harping on that, but for the hoppy beer, fresh is hugely important. So, as you can see, there is no dearth of excellent beer to be had in Greensboro, thanks in part to Wilmington Beer moving west. That's really huge. Um, if you're around North Carolina, now that this stuff is getting out there, you see beer from Wilmington Brewing Company, New Anthem, Flying Machine, Edward Teach. These are all great breweries. They make fantastic beer. I would put Wilmington beer up against any beer in the world if you let me pick the Wilmington beer. Now, that's not to say it would win, but that's how strong I feel like the breweries are in Wilmington, some of them. They're competitive with beer anywhere. So, I've got some interesting beer for the next couple of weeks. Stuff from all over North Carolina, a little bit of stuff from South Carolina, one gypsy beer that you could say is from here or from there. Um, loving being in Greensboro with all the good beer coming up here. Uh, love Best Way, great beer, great prices. So that's what we got going on with the beer, and now we're going to take a look at those music videos I was talking about. One thing that I have been keeping up with is new metal, uh, thanks mostly to K-Man Riffs on Twitter. He is a one-stop shop when it comes to new and upcoming metal of all types. Frankly, I don't know why the guy doesn't have like a million followers. Every week it's like 30, 40, 50 new albums he's putting out there for everyone to check out, just like clockwork. I've said it on Twitter, and I'll say it here now. If you're into metal and you're not following K-Man Riffs, you are fucking up because you're missing out on a whole lot of great metal. So, as soon as I get done with this episode, I'm going to start working on the next one. That's going to be a mid-year check-in on new metal and the ever-popular top 10, and that'll get us caught up on metal. Then I'll circle back around to hot sauces on the next episode, and I think that'll get us caught up on everything. Um, I am going to mention real briefly that Power Trip has a live album out on Bandcamp right now. It's digital only. It's called Live in Seattle 5 28 2018, for what I hope are obvious reasons. And it kicks ass, as well you might expect from an album from Power Trip. So check it out. I'll put a link to the Bandcamp in the show notes and roll, it, roll on down there and click it and check it out. So before everything went south with COVID, this episode was going to be a look at what was then my current top five metal albums of 2020. And I'd done video clips for a couple of songs with permission. And they were my first attempts at pan and zoom animation, and I think they're pretty good for what they are. So we're going to take a look at them, even though I'm not going to do that segment now. I haven't had to change the episode up a bit. The first clip we're going to look at is from an album called Forest of Chaos, and that's the second EP from, or second LP rather, from French old school death metalers Red Dead. It's the follow-up to their 2017 debut Therapy of the Evil, and it's out on Great Dane Records. It is a brutalizing blend of Deeds of Flesh style brutal tech death metal and black death with plenty of thrashy bits, tempo changes, and chugs. All told, it's 10 3 to 4 minute verse chorus bulldozers plus an intro and an outro, all with that brutal Deeds of Flesh style production. It's just everything you could want from that style of metal. It's a great album. The clip itself is from the track Butcher's Prey, and the clip is just a sick, sick, brutal tech bridge that does a great job of showing that aspect of the band's sound. So that's what I chose to focus on for the clip that I did. I want to say thanks to the great folks at Great Dane for letting me use the clip. If you want to check the album out after hearing this little piece of it, which you absolutely should because it's a great album that will probably end up in my top ten at the end of the year, I'll put a link to that in the show notes too.
So I did both of these video clips up front and put them on YouTube as off-channel videos to let them go ahead and catch the automated copyright claims that I knew that they would catch, and they both did. The Red Dead clip wasn't a problem. Um, the label had cleared it up front, so I just had them talk to whoever it was they had to talk to at YouTube, and they got it taken care of really quick. Um, the next clip that I'm going to show, or the next clip that I did rather, was from Sculpture's new album, Eisenzeit, and that did not work out so well. I had gotten permission to use the clip from Thorsten, who's the band's vocalist, but apparently the label felt differently because they chose to let the copyright claim stand when I appealed it with YouTube. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use that clip because I'm not willing to have a copyright claim on one of my main episodes. Um, I've got enough of those already. I don't need to add any more. Um, it is a fantastic album, though, and I really appreciate Thorsten being cool enough to let me use the clip. So I'm going to put a link to the album in the show notes and just say, if you like epic war-themed doom death like Halo Bullets, do not miss this album. Scroll down when you're done watching this video. Check it out. It's a great album. Fortunately, since I really like the video clip that I did, my buddy AJ Nemesis saved the day and actually wrote a passage to match the video. And as you would expect from AJ Nemesis, it kicks ass. So... This is a clip from Scorched Earth from AJ Nemesis. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about some great beer, and I hope you like the video clips. That's certainly one of the things I intend to do more of. If you did, please take a second and give the video a like. That's really important, and it's an easy way to say thanks for all the hard work that went into the video. Also, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Just click the subscribe button and ring that notification bell. And that's the most important way you can help support my content because subscriber count is key on YouTube. So if you're not a subscriber, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. Just click that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and that'll help me out. And I appreciate it. So in closing for this time, I'm Old Man Metal. Thanks again for joining me today. If you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, get new friends. Till next time, keep those horns up high. Y'all take care. listening to Old Man Metal's Musings. All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics, a South Park podcast called Suck My Balls. The Infinite Fringe, a watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido, ex Stradivarius guitarist, the Timo Tolki podcast, and the great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like podcast and the Laughcast. So check out RatSoundReview.com or search RatSoundReview on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, 
Spotify, Stitcher, and more.